Hello, and welcome back to the next part of making your nameplate. Yesterday, you made a very basic beginning uh, nameplate. We're going to actually add some customized pieces to it today. I'm going to show you two different things that I create. You can either um, remake these two pieces that I do, or you can try to create something new based on what you learned today. It's up to you. So what we're going to do first is open up our nameplate. You can see all the other projects that I've made. As you start making things throughout the years, it's just going to save everything for you, which is nice. But we're going to come to this newest one that I've been working on, which is the nameplate. Instead of clicking on the picture, if you come up to this blue tinker this, it'll actually jump you right into the project so you don't have to go through that other screen. It's just a little bit of a faster way to get in. And you're going to see that the nameplate that I've created is one color because I've grouped it together. When you group things, it'll usually jump it to one color unless you choose otherwise. So if you followed along yesterday with the video, you'll see you should have this all grouped together as one thing. The first thing we actually need to do is ungroup this because we want to stretch out the bottom plate here so that we have some room to actually build on. So if I ungroup, you're going to see that now it changed to two separate colors, so I know that this is ungrouped. And if I go to stretch it, I'm actually going to choose this black box here because this is going to stretch long-wise my length without changing my width. But right now, because I just ungrouped it, it has the whole thing selected. So watch, when I click and drag, it actually stretches my letters out too, right? So I'm going to undo this. And I want to click off of it first, and I want to make sure that I only select the plate. Because if I just grab the plate, then when I stretch this out, you'll see, see how the plate stretches out, but the letters stay the same? Now I have this little spot where I can uh, add a new design or something different. So once you stretch your plate out so you have a little bit of a space to build on, you can then go ahead, click, and drag around the whole thing and group it together. This way, the letters don't accidentally get pulled off and we can just save that for what we add to it later. So we're going to click and drag this to the back of the plate because we're going to actually build up here something new. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to build is a football. It's a very easy shape and you can do this with pretty much anything you can think of. You just have to break it down into smaller shapes and figure out how to put it together. So let's say I want to create a football. First thing I'm going to do is come down here and I'm going to find a shape that works. Well, this looks like half a football. So if I pull this out, I can now actually take this and rotate it onto the side. So again, I find my rotations. Here's my one that I want to do side to side like this. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to make this 90 degrees because that's a quarter turn. It always turns it a quarter of the way. And now I have half my football, but what I need is this other half over here. Well, the easiest way to do that is to duplicate it. So in order to duplicate a shape, you're going to use the control button. So holding down control, and you're going to hit the letter D, like dog. So this is duplicate. And it looks like nothing happened, but if I actually use my arrow keys on my keyboard and walk this over, you can see I have two pieces now. So what I need to do is flip this all the way around. So I'm going to do a quarter and then another quarter. So it's actually 180 degrees, right? That's a whole flip all the way to the other side, 180 degrees. And now if I walk this over to try to line it up just a little bit, you can see now I have a shape that looks like a football. So I'm going to group these two pieces together, click and drag to select them both and hit the group button. And now I have the shape that looks like this. And if I want to really make it look like a football, I can choose a brown just so I, I can see what I'm working with. Just remember that even though we're putting colors here, it doesn't print in these colors. It only prints in whatever filament is in the um, 3D printer. So I think right now we have gray in the filter so uh, in the printer. So anything I print, any of your nameplates will come out all gray because it only prints in one color. But you can always paint it with acrylic paint or um, use Sharpie markers to color it if you wanted to later on. But I like to change the colors just because it helps me visualize what I'm designing because I have a hard time like just seeing it in my head. So feel free to change the colors if it helps you. Just realize that when I print it, it's not going to print necessarily in those colors, okay? So now I have my basic shape of my football. The next part that I need are the laces, right? So if I think about the laces, they're kind of like rectangles. So I'm going to go up and find a shape that I can use. So here we go. I got this box here, right? Which seems ridiculously large. But remember, we can always reshape and resize anything. So I'm going to make it white. As if it's a lace, I'm going to shrink it way down. I'm going to kind of shorten it so it's not quite so tall. And then I'm going to move it over top of the football 
and see if I need to adjust the size. So once I have it about where I want it on the football, I need to raise it up, right? So there's two ways to go up. It's this little black arrow here where I can click and drag up, or I can hold down control and hit the up arrow at the same time, and that also rises it up. So if I look at it like this, it still seems a little crazy huge. So I'm going to shrink this a little bit smaller, click off, that looks like a better size, walk it to a spot, that looks pretty good. Now we're going to use that duplicate button again, right? Because I'm going to put on three laces. So I'm going to do control D for duplicate. I'm going to arrow over until it's in a spot that I like. And then here's the cool thing about duplicate. Since I'm doing it again, it's not only going to make another of these rectangles, but it's going to move it the same amount to the right. So watch, I hit control D and there's my third one. So now if you look here, I look like I'm actually going to move my football instead of the laces because I want a little bit more centered. That looks pretty good, right? Not bad. Pretty close to a football. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these and I'm going to show you how to group things and still keep all the colors. So if I go ahead and hit group like this, it's going to make it all one color. So I made it this all brown. But let's say that I want to be able to see the white laces still, just for me, just because I like the way that it looks. If I click the color, you'll see that once you have it grouped, I can then choose this multicolor option. And now it'll show me all the colors, but it's still grouped together. So now I have this football here that I created, which looks pretty cool. And let's say I want to put it on my nameplate that I have here. This is a tiny bit too big, but don't forget, once you have everything grouped together, you can actually now shrink it down a little bit more to make it fit how you want it to fit. And maybe I want to shrink it down this way too, right? And now I can kind of walk it onto my plate and maybe I want to get real fancy and rotate it so it's sitting at an angle. So that looks pretty cool. So now I have this cool football along with my name. Okay, so that's one option, one thing that's pretty easy to put together that I like to make a lot, and that's the football. Another easy option is a flower. And what's cool about a flower is we are going to use the cylinder for all of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the yellow center of the flower. I'm going to drop it down so it's a little bit skinnier. And I don't need to be exact here because I'm just kind of eyeballing things and making it look how I want it to look. Now, since I want this to be a perfect circle, I am going to type my numbers in because see how this is 20 by 20? The length and the width has to be equal for it to be a circle, right? So I, let's make this, let's say five by five and see what that looks like. That's a pretty good size. So I'm gonna leave this as five by five and that's gonna be the center of my flower. Now I'm gonna pull out another cylinder and I'm going to look at how tall I made this cylinder. I made the six tall. So I'm going to make this one at six as well so that it's the same height so that they line up that way. And then I'm going to stretch it out and make it more like a shape of a petal. So something that looks more like this. And I think I want to change my color. Let's make it like a cool pretty pink color. because It looks very flowery then. And now I'm just going to use my arrow keys and walk it over to where I like it. So that looks pretty cool, right? Already, it's already starting to look like a flower. Now I'm gonna use that duplicate again, right? Control D. And after we duplicate it, then we're going to walk it straight across like this until it lines up in a position that looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a cool trick that I teach to my fifth graders, but you get a little preview this year. If you click on one of these pieces and hold down the shift key, okay, so the shift key, and then click on the other, it's actually gonna grab just those two pieces and skip over that little yellow circle in the middle. So now I can actually duplicate these two pieces at the same time. So if I go Control D like that, rotate it a tiny bit, in the direction that I like. Let's see, like, uh, that looks pretty good. And then I can just keep hitting Control D, Control D, Control D, and I can keep filling it in until it's a flower that might look like that. that. Actually looks pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with myself. So once again, I'm gonna actually grab all these and group them together so I don't move them out of line. So I'm gonna click and drag a box around it. Choose this group option here. 
And then once it's grouped, it turns it all to one color and see that doesn't look as nice. So I want to actually change it back to the multicolor just for my own happiness when I'm looking at it. And now I can click and actually drag this up onto my nameplate. And I actually, for me, I don't mind it hanging over the edge. I kind of like that. It sticks up a little bit. It looks kind of cool. If you wanted to shrink it and fit it perfectly on there, that's your choice too. So what you're going to work on is actually making either the football or the flower, or if you're feeling creative and you want to try to make your own thing, that's absolutely fine as well. I love to see you kind of play in Tinkercad and use shapes to make new things. I'm always amazed by what some of the students can make. So feel free to play around that way. But I would like to see some sort of design over here that you created that makes it yours. The only other thing I wanted to show you is let's say you want to turn this into um, a keychain. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to actually just punch a hole into the corner here. And if you punch a hole in, so we're going to use this hole shape like this, you're then able to add a key ring or some sort of um, ring along those lines that you can put it onto your backpack or something like that. So what I would do is make a relatively small hole. I wouldn't go much bigger than five by five. I'm going to do four by four because I don't like it to be too gaping. And then you can kind of walk it into a place and you want to zoom in and really make sure that you're leaving enough of an edge. See how this is cutting off here? This would break very easily. So you want to make sure that it's in a location that's going to give you enough of an edge around that hole that it's not going to snap as soon as you try to put a key ring on it. So that looks pretty good like that. So now I'm going to group this Oh, before I group it together. Remember, it is a cookie cutter, right? So you want to actually make sure that it's cutting all the way through. So I'm going to grab the hole and I'm going to drop it down with this black arrow it goes straight down. You want to see it sticking out of the top and the bottom so you know that it's cutting all the way through and it's not going to leave like a thin layer behind. So click and drag. We're going to group it. Remember, it's not a hole until you group the hole with the object and then it becomes a hole. And now you can see I could throw a key ring through there and then I'd have this awesome key ring that I made. All right. So today, make something cool and different. Add it to your nameplate so it stands out and I can tell that it's yours. And then you are done for the day. Tomorrow, I will give you a video on how to export this as a um, STL file, how to put it into classroom for printing. I do my best to print all of my fourth grade nameplates. I like to have all my fourth graders have a nameplate in their hands so they have something that they created and that was printed on the 3D printer. It's kind of cool. All right, if you have any questions, uh, as usual, you can just go ahead and leave me a comment in classroom and I can get back to you as quickly as I can. And I hope that you have fun playing around and making some cool creative stuff in Tinkercad. Good luck.